So, uh, before today's video starts, I want to mention that according to YouTube statistics, only about 23% of all the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you end up liking today's video, please consider subscribing, after all it's free, and you can always change your mind and enjoy the video. Alright, so hello you people, how you all doing? Uh, I've decided in today's video I'm going to show you guys how, as promised, that I'm going to show you the, how we can set up a fairly fast Windows environment. I'll be doing this using VirtualBox once again, since it's a much simpler way of doing things. I also plan on making a video how you can set up a Mac OS VM so you can do your work instead of a Mac OS virtual machine. It's not the fastest way or the fastest virtual machine ever, but it is fast enough. It is a bit slower than it would otherwise be, but just bear with me here. So, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a Windows Virtual Machine and decided to call it the Randy Pro Tut. Uh, you might remember my Randy Pro VM, that's what I used last time and last uh, in the last video. Uh, we'll be having it in our home directory and it's for Microsoft Windows and we have Windows 10 64 bit we click next. In terms of RAM, it is recommended to have 2 gigs, but those of you who know how Windows works, you generally need about twice that, so I think it was 4096 that we actually need, so like 4 gigs of RAM. 4 gigs should be plenty, I normally give it 5, but since I'm recording and have a browser with my notes open, it's actually better for me to have it set up this way with just 4 gigs of RAM. It says it's going, going to create virtual hard disk with 50 gigs. We're going to give it a bit more than that. Dynamic allocated. We're going to give it, I usually give my VMs like 256 gigs because that's a decent amount of space. And it won't take it up automatically. As you can see, it won't take it automatically. If, if it did, I wouldn't have space for any of these VMs anymore. Um, so we have my Randy Pro VM, which is my virtual machine I used last time to show how to connect to a, a sandbox share from within Windows, and I also use it as my main development environment. Well, not main, but if I need to do stuff for Windows and such, or make some programs for Windows, I'll use this VM, it, it works fine. I'm going to show you can set it up on, on your machine if you need to do it in, for some reason. If you're running Linux like I am or Mac OS, it really depends on you. So we're going to click on settings. <coughs> Takes a while to load. Um, there's nothing in here that's interesting, but I'm going to enable both bidirectional clipboard and uh, drag and drop. It's really helpful if you need to transfer files real quick. Next, go to system. Uh, I put the floppy disk all the way down and disable it. In terms of CPU, I normally give it like 3 cores and set execution cap to 100% because Windows needs all that CPU power. And I usually enable these two, it really helps with the performance a bit. In terms of acceleration, I leave it as it is. You can set it how much you want, but I leave it at default. In terms of display, I give it 128 megs of memory, one monitor, and I use the VBOX SVGA and I also enabled 3D acceleration. So you can in fact give it more if you want to, which I will definitely do if I really need that performance. So I'm going to give it a bit more. Uh, in terms of display, I leave it as it is and recording as it is. So next we have this. This is where we give it our uh, ISO. So you wanna click on this disk right here and you wanna click this disk icon and you wanna go to choose a disk file. And you want to go to, if you have it downloaded, you go to downloads and select your Windows 10 uh, image. You can download it from Microsoft. It's around 5 gigs in, in size. Click open. And it's in there already. In terms of audio, since I use it only for work and not for content consumption, I disable audio, but you may want to have it enabled. In terms of networking, I set this to bridged and use my uh, Wi-Fi card, because with that I avoid a lot of those super stupid things, like uh, my network adapter not working and such. And also set the per uh, permissions mode to allow all. That's just in case it will screw up, so set it up like that. I don't enable any serial ports, no any USB ports, uh, no shared folders, and I leave the user interface as it is. 
So with that, we should just click OK. It's all set up now. You can see everything loaded in. And we can start installing Windows. And of course, it opens up my second monitor. There we go. So it selected the server release of Windows. That's not what we want. We want the Windows 10 uh, 2004 English X64 ISO. Start. And it's going to start the installation process. which will take a while to load, obviously. We can also like uh, check the uh, resource use. Seems like we loaded in already, cool. So what we can do, we can click here to select our language and such. Since I have only a single release version, I'm going to leave it as it is. And I'm going to click install now. Sometimes it doesn't register, so I have to double click in order for it to work. Alright, uh, since I don't have a product key, I'm going to click I don't have a product key, but you may want to enter yours. And here is where I select Windows 10 Pro for Workstation. This is one of the newer versions. One of the major differences is that this version is already somewhat optimized, but there's still a lot more you can do to get the most out of it. So I usually pick the Pro for workstations now. It's a really decent version of Windows. It's far less bloated than the regular Pro version, which is what I used to use, but the Pro for workstations, it's really a really solid release. So I'm going to pick that. So I'm going to click Next. Uh, read the end user license agreement. Sometimes a few people actually went through this, there was some sketchy stuff, but ignore it. I picked advanced, so once you get to this, I pick the advanced option, which is to install Windows only. And um, you have this drive over here. You could now click next, but here's something I realized and that's something that helps with stability, at least a bit. Um, you click here new and let it apply with the entire storage and click OK. It's going to partition the drive so it doesn't, you know, destroy itself. So there you go. Click next and it's going to install Windows now. So we're going to wait until it finishes installing, which will take a while. Alright, and we are just about to restart. I just let restart automatically on its own. I never, I never like close it because it sometimes ends up doing more harm than good. So I'm just, I just let it, let it be. It's going to now boot up, it's going to set up all its devices and stuff. And since it's a VM, uh, it makes it actually useful for a bunch of reasons, which I will cover in a future video that I plan making, and that's why you guys should start using virtual machines. If you plan on doing something a bit more serious and can't afford to have any sort of downtime whatsoever, so in case your VM like totally crashes and corrupts itself, you can just start up the second one, which, which is your backup, and you can just keep on working. Uh, one of the things that is actually really beneficial with this is uh, you don't have to think about it when like you know crashes. You can just start up a new VM, and you'll be off to the races. Um, so again, it, it it will take some time to boot on the first time, so. That's actually something I have to do. I have to unmount the uh, CD, so I'm going to unmount it like that. I'm going to resize it back to its original size. Uh, you might notice that in the past few videos I've been using this new environment that I have. This is Manjaro with XFCE. I absolutely love it. I know I said I was using Openbox, but... um, Yeah, it wasn't... It wasn't ideal. It was definitely a good enough environment, but with XFCE you don't have to do anything. It will just work right off the box. Okay, it seems like we're booting. Oh, it's now setting up more stuff. Okay. Most likely, because Windows being Windows isn't fun at all. In fact, I can bring up a, another terminal. It decides to launch anytime soon. It's starting services and such, that's fine. It's supposed to do that. And in the beginning, it will be like really slow. 
well not as slow but Windows is slow from the beginning a lot of people might argue that no it's not slow it's working just fine but in my experience Windows is just stupid slow and it's not fun to use at all yeah recording at 1080p is taking up a lot of space I should set up that server finally well once I get like some money and make and build the server but that's beside the point Okay, there we go. So I'm going to pick the United States as my region. Oh, come on, work with me. Okay, good. Takes a little while to load. That's fine. Uh, we're going to keep the US. And we're not going to add another one. We're going to skip it. Normally I would add another one, but you know, you can if you really have to. Okay, there we go. So this is only for personal use. We can select personal. Uh, we're going to, since this is Randy, we're going to type in Randy. So I know it's a separate one. Oh, wait, we need to select offline account. So select offline account. Sorry about that. We're going to click limited experience because that's pretty much a kind way for Microsoft saying, hey, we want your data. So we're going to do Randy as our user. And we're not going to give him a password, we're just going to skip it. You might have noticed it said here, or even better, set up an online account. Yes, you can collect my data, forget it. Sometimes it even like, uh, okay, so here's the, I'm going to mention it later. So we're going to just select no one to each and every one of these, if you can. So yeah, uh, we're going to select no to all of these and click accept. So pretty much what happened was back then when I had my online account, it pretty much, uh, what it did, it, um, when you have your documents in your downloads folder, it will also sync that. So what happened was I had some important documents on my uh, offline account <coughs> and I decided to log in and all my documents on my downloads were wiped because on the synchronized version it had nothing in there so it wiped everything and I lost a bunch of data so anyway uh, no we're not gonna set up activity history because that's another stupid thing we are not going to let Cortana get things done and we're going to select no because we don't want that bitch to get our data. And it will say hi and then it will send us right away into our environment real soon, hopefully. Okay, so it's almost there. I bet you're gonna... Oh, it's not gonna restart. So select yes in order to connect to the network. And it says it's going to search for the driver. Just click the arrow to get rid of it. So now that we have it up and running, uh, what we can do is we can actually do some things right away. So we're going to type, we're going to select, click here and type in system. And you can see a bunch of stuff that you don't even need, but we want to select this system right here under settings. And we're going to go into advanced system settings. And we're going to go into performance. And we're going to adjust for best performance. And I'm also going to, uh, where is it? Uh, smooth edges of, of the boxes. And we're going to show window contents or drawing. Actually, no, don't, don't leave that on. And hit apply. And it's going to apply everything. And we're going to click okay. And under system protection, uh, you might want to leave this off as it is. And under remote, disable allow remote, and that's it. That's what I usually do to prevent them from connecting or doing stuff to my computer. Uh, next thing is we need to go and find our advanced system settings. Uh, so for that we type in msconfig. It's going to open up the system configurations, open it up or run it as administrator. Uh, 
you have not even installed any drivers yet, that's fine. You just want to first set it up and then do all the stuff that it like gets rid of all the stupid things. Actually, before I like, okay, it managed to load, but I wanted to right click the taskbar and open up task manager. So I want to show you something, click more details, go to performance. And right now we are using around 1.7 gigs of RAM. That's also because we have no drivers or anything installed. And you can see our disk activity is unusually high. Well, the reason for that is that we actually have three processors, I think. Yes, we have three cores in this VM. Um, so our disk activity actually went down just now. I didn't even click summary view. I mean, it's working fine now, but geez. Uh, so we're on 1.6 gigs of RAM and f uh, around 135 processes running in just the first 15 minutes. So anyway, so we want to go into boot, select no GUI boot, click advanced, take number of processors, set it to the highest you can. This is my virtual machines, I'll set it to three. Next, go into services, and on the services, you want to find uh, first some, some Bluetooth things. So type in blue and you should see Bluetooth audio gateway service, Bluetooth support device. Uh, then there should be, not sure if it's in here anymore, but Windows Insider Service might be in here. If it's not, that's fine. Okay, it's fine, it's nowhere to be seen. Um, I'm going to get rid of these smart, smart card things because I don't use them. Uh, there should be, there we go, BitLocker drive encryption. If you're not using it, disable it. Uh, Backyard Intelligent Transfer Service, I think was the next one. You don't need this. Um, well, it's just in case if it enabled, it might break something. Who knows? Um, then there should be fax, untick that. There should be uh, telephony, untick that. Remote desktop services, untick that. Uh, then there should be. Sorry about that. Um, and even Hyper V and stuff on. Uh, yeah, Windows Update Medic Servers, Valid Service, turn that off. Um, then, uh, where is it? VMI performance adapter, turn that off. Windows update, turn that off. Security center, turn that off. And all the Xbox stuff, turn that off. And all the game DVR and Bluetooth user support. Then all these services at the bottom with that weird number, turn those off. Those are new ones added and these are like um, stupidly complicated things that e end up eating quite a bit of processing power. So you do not need those. Um, themes, leave that on if you really want to change your themes. I, I usually disable it but you know, since we're going to do some more changes, I wouldn't recommend you disable it now. It's actually running, so we'll disable it after the fact. I'm going to leave it on for now. Uh, what else? Print spooler. I don't have a printer, so get rid of that. Uh, remote desktop configuration. Get rid of that. Um, Remote access connection, get rid of that. Remote access auto connection manager, get rid of that. Uh, phone service, get rid of that. Uh, where is it? Windows license manager service, get rid of that. Um, Windows Mobile Hotspot Service, turn that off. Windows Font Cache Service, turn that off. Mm. Windows Event Log, I'm going to turn that off because I don't need it. I don't use it, so that's why I turned it off. Mm. Optimized Drives, I'm going to turn that off. 
And I think that's all of it. Yeah, that's pretty much all of it, so... Oh yeah, and there should be also... Uh, let's see, is, is it in here? I haven't seen it anywhere. Oh, that's fine. Hit apply. And uh, what you can do, you can... Uh, set it to view by disabled, and these are all the services I disabled. So that's what I usually disable and it helps with easing off a bit more of the performance out of your system. Under startup you wanna go in here and make sure to disable OneDrive and disable this notification from the security stuff because you do not need it. Okay that's good. Uh, next you wanna hit OK. Now hit exit without restart and don't show this message again. Next, you want to type in a uh, control panel. Uh, you want to change the view from category to small icons. That's what everybody uses. And you want to go into programs and features. And you want to go into turn off and turn off windows features. Uh, I'm going to resize it so you guys can see everything. And this is what I usually do. So normally I would enable this because I need it. Here I leave it as it is. I have pretty much everything aside from, oops, aside from the HTTP activation. Uh, next, I don't have Act Active Directory, Lightweight Directory Service, I don't have that. Uh, there are some containers and stuff, don't use that. I usually turn off Internet Explorer 11, because it should be dead by now. Um, what else do I have turned off in here? Yeah, I left that turned off. Uh, XPS Document Writer, turn that off. Um, print and Document Services, I usually leave these on. Uh, anyone differential API support, I turn this off sometimes, depends on what I need, but I usually leave that on. Uh, what else? I think that's all of it. Uh, also, I like to enable Windows Subsystem for Linux, it's really useful. So you want to click OK, and it's going to start searching for files and downloading them as it needs to, that's fine. That's because we are trying to uh, get it set up so we can actually use it as a work environment, but also we're going to make some changes to it which are irreversible. You won't be able to reverse these changes later on. So you need to realize that, but since it's a VM, it's fine. So we're going to wait until this step finishes because okay, we're going to let Windows Update down the files for you. Right now it's fine because we still have Windows Update enabled. But later on we're going to disable it using my utility and scripts. Also, it's set up to show not the window contents, all you need to have, and that's also what Windows Server uses. It just uses the, these outlines to tell you where it will go. So, that's what I use. So, we're waiting for it to download all the files and um, set it all up for us. Alright, we're back, so it just finished. Um, is it always on top? There we go. So uh, it says us to restart now, we're going to not restart because we don't want to and you might notice I already have opened a website so this is the next step in the tutorial. You want to go to the link in the description to download my utility which is the Windows 10 minimizer. Um, as I mentioned here it will remove all the files and stuff that may affect your work workflow, in my case it doesn't. So. Um, what you have to do is you click over here and you click uh, download zip. 
Windows can open zips by default. Normally you wouldn't have internet connection by now, but you know, I'm gonna click save to save it. It shouldn't take that long. It's already downloaded and it's checking, it's done. So we're going to close out of here. And we're going to go into, first thing I need to do, go to Windows Update Settings. Because there's something I need to check. Because most of the time, if your computer is running really slow, it's because of this stupid thing. Oh, there we go, your device is missing important updates and stuff. Um, we're going to Advanced Options. And we're going to not receive any updates. We're going to go to delivery optimization and we're going to not allow the download from other PCs. We're going to go to advanced options and we're going to say limit bandwidth to the lowest. So if I set it to zero, it's going to set it to the lowest as it can go. Here the same, so it doesn't affect us. So we'll go back. Oh, there should be Windows security and you wanna go, this isn't recommended by the way. Um, we don't actually have to do anything here. And the troubleshoot, I let it don't run any troubleshooters because it messes up with all my stuff. Uh, under activation, I ignore that. Under developers though, I, come on, load up. Takes forever. Uh, I allow it to install apps, you know, in developer mode, so we're going to enable that. And we're going to scroll down and that's pretty much all of it. Um, yeah, that's fine. So yeah, with that set up, uh, we're going to open up the downloaded thing that we already got downloaded in our notes folder. So go on Pop File Explorer, go to Downloads, and you want to right click this and click Extract All. And you want to click Extract, it shouldn't take that long. Okay, it's a bit fucking slow. There we go, it's already downloaded, double click this, and you wanna... Now, this is why I totally hate Windows Defender. So you wanna go into View Security Settings, and um, you want to... It's harmless, but, you know, and we're going to go into... Where is it? Windows Manage Settings. I'm going to disable real-time protection, and I'm going to dis disable cloud uh, cloud delivered protection and automatic sample submission and tamper protection because in a lot of cases it will screw up with this program you can enable it later on if you want to I'm going to leave it dis leave it disabled because I don't like Windows Defender I normally install a vast or something along those lines or maybe even bit defender anyway uh, you wanna double click this uh, or you I recommend running as a as an administrator so run as an administrator for me. You want to click more options and it says unknown publisher, which is weird because on my system it didn't do that, but you want to click run anyway. It's made by yours truly right here. And it should load up. You should probably change the logo and stuff, that's fine. And in here are a lot of fun things. So for example, I'm going to apply the registry tweaks first because those are really fast. And it's done. There's actually one more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, you wanna open up uh, PowerShell as administrator before doing anything else. As administrator. Click yes. And there's a step I didn't mention but I should have mentioned before, but that's fine. And what you want to type in is uh, set, oops, type it incorrectly, set dash, oh, come on. It, it takes like forever. No, 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 no. I want set execution policy. Execution policy. Um, restricted dash force. That's what you need to do. before doing anything else. Should have mentioned that before we do anything. 
So now you want to click run, uh, disable services just in case, so run that. As you can see it's working just fine without any issues and that's done. Next I'm going to create an a star.script to, to kill unneeded apps and it's done. And then the last one, the most effective one to run all the scripts. So click that. I'll click it properly. It will enable it, but you know, I have it in there just in case because sometimes it doesn't. And it's going to ask us if you want to run it again. It's security warnings. You want to, it will ask you every single time because we haven't set it up properly. So close it. Go into the scripts folder and right click each and every one of these and go to properties and unblock them. Uh, that's the only reason why it does that. There we go. So you want to go back into the utility. You may want to restart it, but I'm just going to run it like this. And it's going to run right away because um, security stuff. There we go. It's working fine. So you just have to unblock them and it will work just fine. Because it's something that a few people have messaged me about. It's not a bug. You just have to unblock the scripts in order for them to run automatically. So now all we have to do is just sit back and let it do its thing. I'll be back as soon as it's finished. Alright, we are back. It took a little while longer than expected, but this is what you should see. You would exit it and uh, once, you see, once you see this, uh, that's fine. You can just click exit like this and you'll notice that you don't have your Windows Explorer. Well, simply, since this is on my VM, I don't want it to cause problems, so press Ctrl out and escape so press ctrl out escape and it's going to uh, control shift escape sorry and it's going to open up the task manager click here run a new task and type in explorer.exe and you should have it back see we're back almost it's still loading stuff but we're back pretty much and uh, it's much cleaner looking but there's still one more thing we need to do we're going to open up our search of course Cortana is doing good stuff uh, just press the Windows key you'll notice a lot of the apps are gone almost nothing's in here and you want to type in gp edit dot msc and it's going to open up either this or this, it doesn't matter, you want to have the group policy editor, you want to click open. And it's going to open up this scary thing. And what you want to do is you want to go into resize this, you guys can see it. You want to go to under computer, go to administrative templates, uh, windows components, uh, find windows update, which should be down here. And go to Windows Update for Business. And you wanna go into uh, Select When Preview Builds are Received. Double click this. Double click it again in case it doesn't work. Click Enabled and set this to as high as it can go. So I usually type in 999, it's going to auto correct me to 365. And I set these to be set to the semi-annual channel. Uh, yep. And then I click apply and click next. And uh, then go here to in. I think that's it. When I go into quality updates and set that to, I think four is enough. But again, since these are quality updates, I. I set this to four, normally like four days, because it's hopefully enough time to make changes. You may want to change this like to seven or 31, but I would recommend to set it to like 30, because that's like a hopefully good enough amount. So when I click OK and it's been set, you can also see it over here. It's been set, there's no comment. And uh, select, uh, select the target feature version. You, you don't have to change this, and the same over here. You don't have to change these. Just these two over here and uh, yeah that should be pretty much it so now we're going to reboot it and we'll see if it changed anything so let's reboot the VM 
So the script just finished running, you just hit enter and it's done. And we can look at now the consumption of RAM. There's actually a few more things we need to do. Let's go to our task manager. Which loads up much faster, by the way. And we're using 900 megs of RAM, so it's fairly lowered. <laughs> it's actually 0 0.7, so that's 700 megs on 64-bit windows. And in terms of CPU usage, only 72 processes, so it's already much lower. So it's much faster than it was before, but there's one more thing we need to do. We go over here, we go into, I think it was power. Uh, it was under settings, I know that for sure. Yeah, power and sleep settings. There's actually a few more things we need to do, but... So then we press this and we set it to pretty much never turn off the screens. Set performance for best performance and go to additional power settings. Which should open up, there we go. And we're going to select ultimate performance. And the change power plan, we're going to set turn off display to never. And that's pretty much it. That's how I create my super fast. Well, not pretty much it. There's actually one more thing. We go over here. We type in animate to show windows animations in windows. And you want to disable it. Also disable transparency. Don't hide the scroll bars and show notifications for five seconds. And don't show desktop background. In some cases, it doesn't matter, but I like to disable it. it makes for a minimalistic look. And that's it. That's a super fast environment for you. It's running much faster, no bullcrap, nothing. Around 1 gig of RAM being used. That's only because we just cached it in. But disk usage pretty much non existent. RAM really lowered down to 1 gig, literally. And CPU usage is really down to like 78 processes. So that's pretty much it. This was also an update about the utility that I use. But that's pretty much it. That's what I use as my environment. Since this is VirtualBox, I would normally go over here. Where is it? Uh, it was under... There we go. Devices. I would insert the CD to install the drivers. But since this is just running right now as a tutorial, I don't need to do that here. So yeah. See ya.